Hello, hello, back again. Um, just say hello when you come in. Let me know if I'm having any kind of connection problems, if you would, please. I see it kind of flickering just a little bit. Um, hello, my name's Kelly Weiler. I'm the owner of Girl Upcycled. If you're brand new here and don't know that, that is who I am. We do all things art related. Um, some kind, sometimes we do a little bit of DIY projects. Um, and that nature, sometimes we do furniture, painting techniques, and things like that, which is what we're going to be doing today. Um, let me just do a really quick um, run through. If you missed yesterday's, hi Michelle and Teresa, if you missed yesterday's live, we refinished this little guy right here. Let me see if I can change the angle. We used um, three different colors on the body of it. And then on the inside, we used faded burlap. The outside colors are um, skeleton key, mint chip, and old 57 are the colors we used on the bottom. Hi, Susan. How are you? We used faded burlap in the inside. And then on the very top, the color that I used is layered chocolate. No, no. I'm lying to you. It's weathered wood. <laughs> so weathered wood. And this is all with the DIY clay-based paint products. This is, um, these are products from Debbie's Design Diary. Hey, Renee, I sent you a message. I hope you got that, girly. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do today is we're going to do um, the finishing touches on uh, the product here that we're that we're working on the project that we're working on so we are going to do a glaze on the top of it it's going to be a kind of like a barn wood kind of finish and we are going to be using a couple different products so we're going to use the old and gray this is a barn wood patina instantly weathered instant weathered wood and I'm going to use this a little bit different. I'm going to use it as a glaze, but I'm also going to add another product in with it that's going to help pull this whole thing together. And then I'm going to do some wax blending using different colored waxes on the body of it. Okay, so I hope you guys can hang out and stay tuned and um, see how it comes out. All right, if you have questions, um, that's why I'm doing all of the lives right now. I'm going live every day at two o'clock. So if you have questions, um, suggestions, I'd love suggestions of upcoming lives that I'll be doing throughout the next 30 days um, because I'm kind of trying to figure out everything I want to do. So if you have something you want to learn how to do, just please put that in the comment section. Tell me what is something that you are most curious about um, or even if it's like something, a color that you would like to see um, painted, um, if it's a finish you would like to see, make sure you put that in the comment section for me down below, okay? I appreciate that. Okay, so like I said, we started off um, with the top with weathered wood, and I'm gonna go ahead and get my mix made with my patina. This is old and gray. This is like an instant weathered wood kind of a finish. It's beautiful. It has kind of like a grayish kind of look to it. And I'm first going to just stir it really well. We always want to stir. I try not to shake it really hard. Yes. Um, Michelle is asking, is, is the, are there any colors that I have not used? I don't think so. I don't use, um, there are a few that I don't use a lot of, but I've used every single color, so. All right, but I do use all of them at some point. <laughs> all right, so hopefully, I don't know if y'all can see, I'm gonna change my camera angle and maybe pull this up just a smidgen so that y'all can see just a little bit closer. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put, I've got this little teaspoon here. I'm gonna go one, two, three, 
five, right? Five teaspoons of the patina, the old and gray. off there. Let me put my lid on real quick and then I'll show you. Oh my gosh guys, yesterday I dropped something quite a few times as well. <laughs> Hi Maggie. Hello Froken Crook. I'm not sure if I'm saying that. It's probably Froken. Isn't it? All right. So I have five teaspoons. Here's what it looks like all by itself. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna jump into my, my paint color called Faded Burlap, okay? Faded Burlap is the color that I use on the inside. So I want to incorporate a little bit of that. And so basically, I just, I'm gonna slightly tint it a little bit differently. And I urge you to, you know, give this a try if you've not tried this. I'm just going to use, let's just do one little, one little teaspoon. Let's put that in there. And then we're going to mix it up and we're going to see what that looks like. And I may add another teaspoon or two. And it's just kind of giving it a, just a slightly lighter tone. I may add, let's do, need my spoon off, let's add a little bit more. You can adjust this as you want, guys, okay? You can also do this with the clear patina that we have. You can put any color, make your own glazes. So you're probably like, why are you doing that? Well, the reason I'm doing that is I love the gray hue that it has, but I want to incorporate, I'm thinking about this color, the faded burlap that I have here, and by incorporating a little bit of that into this patina, it's, gonna, it's going to kind of like pull it all together so that it's a little bit, um, what's the word I want to say, that the whole thing's cohesive right that it's pleasant to the eye and it pulls it all together okay so i think we're done mixing this and now we're ready to glaze now now there's a couple of things to do when you're glazing so i did not do a top coat on this first okay if you are worried about it grabbing on you so like if i was if i was if i was wanting a really really soft um, faint texture, I would go ahead and put a hard coat on it first, and then I would do this over top of it. But I'm going for weathered wood, which has, you know, depth, it has movement, and all of that, okay? Um, hello, Lolly Lolly. Thank you, Renee, for sprinkling the love. I love that saying. So sprinkle the love if you can. It's a great way to um, help support small businesses. All right, so I've got that. Now, I've got two brushes here. Look at this gnarly brush, right? You would think normal people throw this kind of stuff away, but I'm not your average normal person, so I keep these. And this is the good stuff. So, and then I've got another one that I'm going to apply with, and then I have this one that I'm going to help create texture with, okay? I'm going to apply with this one, have some towels close by. I usually like the lint-free towels, but I'm just going to use paper towels for today. Now, if you use paper towels instead of the lint-free towels, watch the texture. There's texture on this towel that will transfer onto here. So be careful what you're doing when you're glazing with something that has texture, okay? And if you're not sure of yourself, 
just grab a lint-free rag and use that instead, okay? All right. So let's go ahead and start. I'm gonna get my edges first. And I know you're not gonna be able to see this too well. Be careful you're not gonna drip it down onto your, your painted surface. I'm gonna get this little edge first. And that is how I do it. I paint, I glaze my edges usually first. And then I do the flat surface after that, okay? And I already glazed this side. I may redo just a little bit more so that it's all cohesive. Okay, then you're gonna take your little rag and you're just gonna do a real quick swipe. I'm going to hold this so it doesn't fall forward. You're not pushing hard when you do this, guys. You're just doing a real, just doing a real light swipe. Okay, real light. Then you're gonna take that really gnarly brush and you're gonna just go right over it, okay? And I know that's not showing well, but it will when I start doing this top surface. Um, okay. Let's get started. Hopefully I have enough mixed up up here. Let me pull this in maybe so you can see a little bit closer. How about that? Is that better? So I'm gonna start in the middle and then I pull out. Be careful not to hit the, the side, the lip of it, if you can. If you do hit it, like there's a couple places where I hit it, I will just take my, my little uh, brush, my towel, and I'll just go over it. So you're gonna go over it with this. And then, just like that. And then you're going to take your little gnarly brush and you're going to put that, those lines in there from that little gnarly looking little brush. Okay, and again. Now, and if it's too light for you, you can, you can add more patina, you can adjust it, um, you know, just kind of, I always like to do a little, a little sample before I do something that I'm not sure if it's going to be the exact ratio that I want it. So you can do the same at home, okay? You do need to work quick with this game, okay? Work quick. And pay attention to where you're, you're overlapping your layers. You don't want to see a line. Take your little gnarly brush and let's start running this out. And, and I may have mixed a little bit too much, but that's okay. And your towel, and then my towel, I'm making sure that I turn it so that I have a clean section every time I wipe, okay? Check my sides, I get my little gnarly brush. You guys see that? already starting to dry. Let me see if I can pull this down. So you use a dry towel to keep 
to keep the striations. I just, I just want to wipe it off immediately just so it doesn't get it. I don't want it to grab. I want to, I want the under color to show a little bit, right? Looks like weathered wood, doesn't it? And the more it dries, the better it looks. So it's almost, it's almost dry. But that is a great way to incorporate that, that accent, that little color that you have maybe um, inside rather than just having it really, really dark and pulling more gray. It would have pulled more deeper gray or a deeper brown gray kind of color. So by adding a little bit of that faded burlap, it just kind of brightened it a little bit. And I think it just pulls the whole thing together kind of in a more cohesive way. So, hey, Jerry Ann, thank you. Okay, so that's that. Pull this off of the risers there, but yeah, I'm happy with that. All right, let's go ahead and start waxing. Let's, see. let's get our waxing going, guys. Did anybody put ideas of things that they would like to see? After the top dries, then you'll want to put a hard coat on it. Or you could even put wax on top of it if you wanted, you didn't want it to be, you know, the, the sheen of the top coat. I use Big Top is what I use. Michelle is dropping some links for all of you. If you want to try any of these products, you can, it'll take you right to it. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and start the waxing, and I want to start with my clear, some clear wax on here. My little brush, hopefully it won't run out. I'm going to go over on this other side. Now, I did have a question the other day. Somebody worked on a project with uh, their mother, and what had happened was one of them was going up and down, and the other one was going in a round motion. So it kind of, kind of had a different, like you could definitely tell that somebody else had done the other side is what was happening. So um, you want to make sure that you are all buffing the same way or applying the wax the same way, not buffing, but applying the wax in the same way, same direction. And I don't think there's any, any big difference. It's just a matter of if you want it in a circular motion, then you need to do the whole thing that way, right? And I just told her to go back over it and reactivate it with the clear wax and just start, um, you know, going in whatever motion she wanted to, just to kind of like get it so the finish would kind of look the same. Okay. Thank you, Rhonda. Hi, Betsy. You're welcome, Jill. You missed the beginning. I glazed the top, Betsy, so you'll have to go catch the replay when this is done. And watch that replay. Are you over on, uh, okay, yeah, if you go to, uh, I don't know if you're on YouTube, but it's probably easier to find on YouTube. Those of you on Facebook, if you've not signed up for my YouTube yet, I would love for you to do that. I am trying to grow my channel over there. So there's the clear, and then we're going to go, going to dip in. 
little bit of dark wax, guys. This is, again, the DIY paint. And this is the dark wax. And it does, it does get pretty dark. Goodness, I think I'm standing in the light, so I'll try to get over on this side. Okay. Thanks, Rhonda. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start applying this around the edges. Just like we did with the paint, we're gonna start blending it into the middle, just like we did with the paint. And if you missed that, guys, you can catch that on the replay or on uh, yesterday's video. And you're just gonna slightly here. So think about where it would naturally kind of age and that's where you kind of want to apply it. So like around here where people would handle it, it would be aged and when people would grab it, that's where it would be aged up in any of the cracks and crevices is kind of where you would see um, that dark wax laying inside or, um, a piece. Okay, and then we're gonna switch over. And we could, I thought about, I don't know if we should do the shipwreck or this. Shipwreck might be a little bright, I don't know. I could do the shipwreck in the middle. Mm, hold on, it's open. And then there's the white. Patina over wax. Wax over patina. So like the top of this, the glazing, if I wanted to go over top of it, I do that with the wax. I could put some wax over top of it and that would kind of kind of dull it down a little bit. Okay. I don't know, I can't decide. I think I'll just do the white. But we do have some wonderful, wonderful waxes. So again, you're gonna to wanna to apply it to the middle and then you're gonna start working it out. rag here and now we start and in the middle first that way out it's a little loose right there have to tighten that up Thinking white, yes, that's great minds think alike. See what happened? I just drug a little smidgen of that over, over the middle. So be careful when you're waxing or glazing. You can drag your colors into the below you if you're not careful. And then every time I go back, I'm turning my rag just going to want to play around with it and get the color kind of how you want it. You can go back in and add if you need to. Oh, 
actually do have some wax brushes, but they are, they've got different colors on them right now. Need to wash them out. I'm kind of just working it out to the sides. Dreamy, huh? Here. Okay, those waxes are so smooth and buttery. I agree, but it looks pretty, right? So it's still going to dry. It needs time to dry a little bit. And then what you would do is tomorrow you would come back and just buff it until it's a really nice sheen. So think of it like when you wax your car, right? You got to let it dry and then you come back and then you buff it. Or you could wait at least a few hours. Sometimes I, I start buffing it at the end of the day too, a few hours from now, but pretty, right? So let's, let's carry on. It's almost dry up top. And let's put this away. Won't be using that one. Um, but the new shipwrecked is beautiful too. It's kind of like the color of the mermaid tail. It's that deep turquoise. Um, it's beautiful for using um, wax finishes if you're going for, um, you know, like funky boho or. Um, beachy look or anything like that. Um, it's beautiful. Okay. We'll start again with the clear. And then what the clear does, gang, in case you're wondering, is it just seals. It puts a, a coating of seal over top of this because it's very porous. Let's see if I can go back a little bit. It's very porous and uh, matte paint, so it will it will soak in. And then when you go to put your colored waxes on, then it's not going to grab on you. Let's say you get too much on there. Um, it will come off just a little bit easier. So if you do not use the clear wax, um, just know that it's going to probably be, it's not probably, it will be darker or more intense of color. So let's say you wanted to use the shipwreck and you did not put the clear on first, it's going to have more of a dominant um, color of that turquoise that you use with the shipwreck color. If I was to go on top of here with the dark wax, it would grab and it would really, really go a little dark. Hi Nadine, so glad you're here. Even in just a few minutes, we don't mind. So again, I have asked all of you what you would like to see coming up as a project. I've had a request for one of my chandeliers. So we'll do like a chandelier um, painting with the IOD molds. We'll recreate a brass chandelier and we'll make it look just like it's aged and beautiful. We'll make it look like it's something from a high end kind of a store somewhere. Too many heartaches over trying to get dark wax off when I was too heavy handed and didn't put the barrier coat. Yep, it really does make a difference. And you know, just kind of, you'll get a feel for you know, how, how you, um, like, was it, who was it? Patricia said she's heavy handed. You'll get a feel for how you paint and how you apply. So after you get into it, but typically, especially when 
they are a little heavier handed. I had not decided whether I'm going to do a hard coat in here or if I'm going to do wax. So that's why I'm not going all in with that. If you're wondering, you could do either way. Um, the hard coat, I'm definitely going to do hard coat on the top. Um, just because I picture this being maybe, you know, in a family, in a, I don't know, somebody's a family that maybe has kids or little ones. And so that hard coat or a husband, <laughs> but that hard coat, putting that hard coat on there is just going to protect it from glasses and things that are put, you know, on, so on top of here. The turquoise wax is beautiful, but it's it's pretty bright. Exactly, it is beautiful, but if you put this barrier down, it will it will give you a little control. Okay, dark wax. Back to the dark. So uh, nice today. We've seen there's lots of people out today. I think we're our little town is getting back to a normal normal life. Had a customer in today, and we're starting to get see people venturing back out. Right. Um, if you are local and you need anything, you are welcome to just um, order online as well. And then I have something new that I added to my website is local pickup so that you don't get charged your shipping. So, um, and then what I do is just notify you when you're ready, when your package is ready for pickup. And simple as that, so. How many things can I drop this week? <laughs> um, Michelle says it's storming like crazy in Tulsa. Oh my goodness, good indoor day. You were making your own before they came out with this. Oh, you're talking about the turquoise? Yeah, I was too. I think it's just basically... So what she's saying, she was making her own um, turquoise shipwrecked, which is basically you can mix clear wax and put in the mermaid tail and you'll get a turquoise wax. So some people are not comfortable mixing their own. So if you're not, then you can just buy shipwrecked. It's beautiful though. Good enough. I think it's going to be a cute little, little piece. Definitely is a, like I said, it's nice. It has the dovetail drawers to it up here. There's a nice little solid piece. I do want to tighten up the bottom. But yeah, then she'll be good as gold, right? Yes, you can mix in any of the colors with the clear wax. Absolutely, any old color, you can make your own waxes. So one of these days, that's a good idea for a demo. I'll come on here and we will do different colored waxes, okay? If you are somebody that is 
lives around a lake or the ocean, I would just uh, I would just go ahead and buy the shipwreck because it's just you would use it a ton. Is very pretty. Okay. I have another one I have to do too now. I don't know if somebody would just buy one or. What do you think? When you buy, when you buy stuff like this, do you buy them in pairs or do you buy a single? So I have another one, so I don't know if I should do the same finish on it. Inquiring minds want to know. We do have, speaking of a storm, we are supposed to get a storm coming through today. So, but we do have sun right now. So it's Ohio and it's so weird. Our weather literally changes from hour to hour here. It's, it's crazy. Um, love the blending. Thank you. Finally feels like spring. I hear ya in Ohio. Yeah. Um, Let's see, Betsy Kelly says, I mixed a light yellow too, and that was a cool color. Yeah. I have not mixed a yellow wax yet. That would be, I think it would be pretty to use the uh, sunshine or the queen bee for it, maybe. Are you all putting your ideas in for different projects you'd like to see? Demos. Almost out of wax. You can just tell it just kind of sucks it right out, doesn't it? absorbs right in. Somebody wanted to know how to paint a flamingo. <laughs> of all things, I thought that was funny. So I might be painting a flamingo at one time. Betsy says, I'm always too matching sets are big. It's hard to find two, so I would say do both. Okay. Thank you, Jude. Michelle says, I buy singles and mismatch them, but there are still so many that like matching. Yeah, so that's why it's kind of hard to, to know what people, what they like, I guess. So I appreciate the input. All right, let's see. Dark wax. Start around the corners. You're just basically doing that same kind of blending technique with that we did with the paint, but only with the wax. You start with the dark outside and you're just kind of creating shadows basically what we're doing. We're creating shadows and creating a little bit of antiquing or weathering where it would naturally kind of get dirty a little bit throughout the years. It would get stained, right? And we're going to dip into the white. Yeah, 
of work it in, Christy. Pretty good. I will be doing some art on here live sometime soon. Do a live intuitive piece. I prefer don't have the same. You like to have them mismatched. Yeah, I kind of do too. I have a great rocking chair that's needing something fun. All right, girl. Matching sets are big is what Betsy says. Jude says she loves flamingos. Yeah. Did not add white down here yet, did I? Let's add that. Sound effects help. <laughs> right? Anybody else? Sound effects? Now, um, I was thinking about if I come on live with y'all and do an intuitive painting session, I may just get on and paint and not actually talk much if that is okay. I don't know how y'all feel about that. But I thought about having like my phone. I've got some really cool books that I have on Audible and maybe I could just have that going and then you could kind of listen to, like that's what I would do normally if I'm painting. I would list to, listen to some different Audibles or, I don't know. I'm not even sure if I'm allowed to do that. I need to check into that, but. I thought, well, that would be something. I know I can't have music going. Pretty, pretty. All right. And then last but not least, we're going to apply Big Top to the very top. Hey, Marsha. The blue looks really pretty. Oh, this. Thank you. Thanks, Karen. Better, so you guys can see a little bit better. All right, now we're gonna do um, big top. I'm gonna get me wipe this off. Any questions about um, the paint finish? The waxing, any more waxing questions? Make sure I dry this off. How are we doing on time? Oh, we're good. We are good. I might actually keep it under the hour mark. Was hoping it comes today. What? I can't wait to get mine. Teresa, Teresa, did you order? Teresa, I think, did I send you a message? I think I need, I think I sent you a message. And yeah, I just need to touch base with you before I can get it sent. If you are who I, I think. I think you're the one that I was trying to get a hold of yesterday. Something weird was going on with the, the computer with your order. So, okay. But anyway, I'll get a hold of you. All right. So I am using, let's see. 
my synthetic brush. This is a synthetic paint pixel brush. Right around the lip. It doesn't really take too long to do this. I think the most of it is we're waiting on getting on the layers to dry, right? So make sure you're following that grain that you put on there. So we basically did that faux kind of grain look. And you're just going to follow. You want your brush strokes to completely follow that. And then there's your hard coat. And then typically I do at least two coats. Um, if it is a family with a ton of kids, if it's a dining room table, I may even do a third coat just for, just for a little extra love. So pretty. You guys will have to give me a shout out. If you give this a try, I'd love to see how yours turns out if you give this glazing process a try. I, I love to glaze. And a lot of people don't. And I think that maybe sometimes they're just maybe afraid of it because they're, they're not used to glazing. Um, but it's super easy. And this is what it's looking like, guys. Pretty, huh? So, like I said, and then you do another coat. And, and I'm still, I'll do something on the inside of it. I don't know if I'm going to wax or, or if I'm going to do a, I might do a top coat on the inside of it just so I don't have to wax and buff it. Do you have to see in between the coats? No, you do not. You, I mean, you can if you, for some reason, I've never seen bubbles on mine or anything, but you know, if you feel like you need to, I don't think it's going to hurt it, but I never do. So cute though, right? Love it. Linda says she loves it. So I would love to see your pictures if y'all give it a try. Um, let me know how it turns out. Um, meanwhile, yeah, easy, easy way just to update that old piece. Maybe that's from your grandmother's or um, something that you maybe have found at a little flea market. Speaking of which, I'm so glad flea markets and stuff are back open. So I am, I think I'm probably going to head, so I'm probably going to head to the restore before they close today. So I'm so excited. Um, any other questions before I take off? You guys, I'm actually, I'm at 48 minutes. I'm under an hour. So I'm so proud. I'm, I'm proud of myself. Any questions? I'm going to give you just a second. So let me just say, if you are interested in learning more about whether it's artwork, because I do all kinds of mixed media. I do a lot of intuitive art. Um, I do the furniture painting. If you love that kind of thing and want to learn more, make sure you hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit that little bell, that notification um, that you will get notified every time I upload a new video. It'll kind of give you a little notification to go watch it. And hopefully you love it and learn lots and lots. And I love for you guys to show me all the pictures of your finished pieces. All right. So with that being said, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. And again, I'll be back tomorrow, 2 o'clock Eastern time. I'll see you guys then. All right. Bye.